guys. All right, I'm going to briefly talk about the stuff we talked about in our virtual meeting on Monday, April 20th. And so if you made it to that, great. This is gonna be a quick review. If you didn't make it to Monday's virtual meeting, then I'm gonna just quickly discuss what you need to do this week. <laughs> My dog's howling. <laughs> All right, last week we, we read and listened to chapters one through five, and then we took a quiz over it. 75% of you took that quiz, and for the most part, we did really well. The A couple things that we struggled with, I think, were just when I stop and talk about a certain part in the story, you that's when you really need to listen because I really tried to put all the figurative language pieces that I stopped and talked about. I talked a lot about why good authors use figurative language. So when I'm reading the chapter to you, when I stop reading and I have a teaching point, just like in class, that's when you need to pay attention. Trust me, I know online is way different than being in class and being able to raise your hand and being able to have those good conversations. So even if you got, so the quiz was out of 19, if you got a 14 out of 19, I'm okay with that, it's different. But there were still some of you that got less than 14 out of 19. And to me that just shows that, yeah, it might not be a signing work that you're really vigorously having to do, but clearly you're not paying much attention to the videos. And so hopefully, once you see your score, that's a wake-up call like, oh, okay, even though I just have to listen to this video, Ms. Cox provided me notes that I'm going to go through and I'm really going to listen and maybe I'm going to listen to the chapter twice. So if you didn't love your grade on that test, that's my advice to you is maybe it, these videos are only 15 minutes, 20, 15 minutes. So go back and read it again and listen to it again and fill out your notes. Maybe the first time you listen to it, it's just for your enjoyment and entertainment and you're just listening. And then the second time you watch the video, that's when you can be filling out your notes, okay? So with that being said, um, the next part of our notes, I included the a diagram of Plot Mountain, just so that you could see it's the same thing we've been talking about in class. And then we're gonna be focusing on conflict Yes, the conflict so far is that our main char character, Melody, is stuck inside of her body and she is super, super smart. She has a photographic memory. She can even talk in a different language because of all of the TVs and books that she's read, but no one knows that. And so basically on our notes, is that the main conflict? That I, uh, That's the question I'm asking you. Is that gonna be the conflict throughout the whole story that she's frustrated and she can't be understood? Or is there gonna be a different conflict that we learn later on? Because what we've known so far is the exposition is just that introduction. We're learning, we were learning the background of Melody and her parents, and then we even dove into her school life. So that was the exposition introduction piece. Now we're getting to a conflict. Although we learned the conflict really early, I just don't know if that's gonna be the conflict throughout. And then climbing up that plot mountain to rising action. So Rising action, remember it, build suspense. So not only are we gonna be taking notes on conflict and rising action, but instead of figurative language pieces, I want to focus on parts of speech. And parts of speech are nouns, proper nouns, verbs, and adjectives. And I wrote all this in your notes, but nouns are person, place, or thing. So for example, classroom, girl, pencil, Proper nouns are specific nouns. So, for example, Lincoln Middle School, Mrs. Cox, Hydro Flask. It's a specific name of a water bottle, right? Um, verbs, action words, so running, walking, talking, sitting. And adjectives are describing words, so fast, bumpy, blue, round. So, while I read chapter six, I want you to be focusing on how Melody describes herself. So those are some of the notes you're gonna be writing down. So the adjectives that Melody uses to describe herself. And I'll kind of pause and walk you through this chapter six. And then I'm gonna be asking you, maybe chapter seven might be proper nouns or verbs of certain things. So of course, I'm not gonna have you write down every single adjective, but I just want us to be focusing on for chapter six, 
the types of adjectives, so describing words that Melody uses to describe herself. All right, and then that's pretty much it. So if we have a rising action piece, we'll talk about it. I don't know if we will, because it's only chapter six. Chapter five was starting to get um, more past the introduction phase. So chapter five was in the classroom. We had Sydney the snowman, and Melody, our main character, talked about basically everyone in her class, and she gave a little blurb about all of the people in her class. So chapter six, no chapter title again. In bold, it says, Mrs. Violet Valencia lives next door to us. Violets are purple, and Valencia oranges are, well, orange. Purple oranges are just plain unusual, and so is she. She's a big woman, about six feet tall, with the biggest hands I've ever seen. They're huge. I bet she could put a full-size basketball in each of her palms and still have room left over. If Mrs. V is, well, like a tree, then my mom is a twig next to her. All right, that's everything in bold, and now it's going into regular print. I was about two years old when I first started hanging out at Mrs. V's house. Mom and Dad hardly left me with anybody at first, but sometimes their work schedules overlapped, and they needed a third person to help out. Mom said Mrs. V was the very first visitor when I first came home from the hospital, the first person to just pick me up like any other baby. A lot of my parents' friends had been scared to even touch me, but not Mrs. V. Mrs. V wears huge flowing dresses, must be miles of material in those things, all in crazy color combinations. Bubblegum pink with fire engine red, with peachy sherbet, with bright cinnamon, and all shades of orange and purple, of course. She told me she makes the dresses herself. I guess she'd have to. I have never seen anything like them in any store in the mall, or in a hospital, either. Mrs. V and Mom used to work together as nurses at the hospital. Mom told me the children there had been crazy about her. She wore the same bright outfits in the, in the preemie ward, the kids' cancer ward, the children's burnt unit. Color brings life and hope to these children, she denounced boldly, daring anybody to disagree. I guess nobody did. I remember sitting on Mrs. V's porch that very first time. Mom and Dad looked concerned, but Mrs. V held me tightly and bounced me on her knees. She must have a hidden microphone under those flowing clothes. She has one of those voices that can make anybody shut up, turn, and listen. Of course I'll watch Melody, she'd said with certainty. Well, Melody is, well, you know, really special, Dad said hesitantly. So, one of the adjectives so far that Melody's been described as is special. So go ahead and write special in your notes. <clears throat> All right. All kids are special, Mrs. V had replied with authority. But this one has hidden superpowers. I'd love to help her find them. We can't possibly pay you what this is worth to us, Dad began. Mrs. V had shrugged and said with a smile, I'll appreciate what you can give me. My dad looked sheepish. Well, thanks, and I'll get that ramp finished this weekend. I just need to make one more trip to the lumber yard. Now that will be a big help, Mrs. V had said with a nod. Melody can be a handful, Mom had warned. All right, so a handful, that's also an adjective. So Melody is special and a handful. Mrs. V lifted me into the air. I've got big hands. We want her to reach her highest potential, Dad added. Oh, gag me, Mrs. V said, startling him. Don't get bogged down in all those touchy-feely words and phrases you read in books on disabled kids. Melody is a child who can learn and will learn if she sticks with me. Dad looked embarrassed, but then he grinned. Bring her back in 20 years. You'll have her back home by supper time. So most work days, I'd end up at Mrs. Valencia's place for a couple of hours until Mom or Dad could get home. When I got older, I went over to Mrs. V's every afternoon after school. I don't know how much they paid her, but it couldn't have been enough. <coughs> From the very beginning, Mrs. Valencia gave me no sympathy. Instead of sitting me in the special little chair my parents had bought for me, she plopped me on my back in the middle of the floor on a large soft quilt. 
The first time she did that, I looked up at her like she was crazy. I cried. I screeched. She ignored me. Walked away and flipped on her CD player. Loud marching band music blared through the room. I liked it. Then she came back and put my favorite toy, a rubber monkey, a few inches from my head. I wanted that monkey. It squeaked when you touched it, but it may as well have been a million miles away. I was on my back, stuck like a turtle. I screamed louder. Mrs. V sat on the quilt. Turn over, Melody, she said quietly. Sometimes she can make her voice really soft. I was so shocked. I stopped yelling. I couldn't turn over. Didn't she know that? Was she nuts? She wiped my nose with the tissue. You can turn yourself over, Melody. I know you understand every word I say to you, and I know you can do this. Now roll. Actually, I never bothered to try very hard to roll anywhere. I'd fallen off the sofa a couple times, and it hurt, so I usually just waited for Mom or Dad to move me to a comfortable position. Look how you're lying. You're already on your side, halfway there. Use all that screaming and hollering energy. You've got to take... You've got to take you to another position. Toss your right arm over and concentrate. So I did. I strained, I reached, I tried so hard, I farted. Mrs. V cracked up, but slowly, slowly, I felt my body rolling to the right, and then, unbelievably, plop. I was on my stomach. I was so proud of myself, I screeched. I told you so, Mrs. V said, victory in her voice. Now go get that monkey. I knew better than to protest, so I reached for it. The monkey was now only two inches from my hand. <clears throat> I tried to scoot. My legs kept doing the opposite of what my head wanted them to do. I wiggled. I grabbed a fistful of the quilt and pulled. The monkey got closer. You're a smart little cookie, Miss V told me. All right, so you're a smart little cookie. You can write smart little cookie, um, even though that is figurative language, so you can just write smart. So. Smart is another adjective that Melody's been described as. All right. I gave the quilt another tug, and finally, gradually, I had the monkey in my hand. I clutched it, and it squeaked as if it were glad to see me. I grinned and made it squeak again and again. After that workout, you must be hungry, she said. She fed me a vanilla milkshake first, then my vegetables and noodles. Mrs. Valencia always serves dessert first, and I always eat all my food, the healthy part and the yummy part too. It's our secret. Mrs. V is the only person who let me, lets me drink soda, Coke, Sprite, Tahitian treat. I love the nose tickling burp. Mom and dad mostly give me milk and juice. Mellow Yellow is my favorite. Miss, Mrs. V even started calling me that. At Mrs. V's house, I learned to scoot and then to crawl. I'd never win a baby crawling contest, but by the time I was three, I had learned to get across the room. She made me figure out how to flip myself over from front to back and back to front. She was tough on me. She let me fall out of my wheelchair onto pillows so I could learn how best to catch myself. Suppose somebody forgets to fasten that seatbelt of yours, she said in that voice that sounded like she was chewing gravel. You better know what to do or you'll bust your head wide open. I didn't want a busted head, so we practiced. She'd send me back home, tell Mama I had a good dinner and a good poop. I have no idea why parents think that's so important. Then wink at me. I was like her secret mission. Once I started school, however, I discovered I had a much bigger problem than just falling out of my chair. I needed words. How was I supposed to learn anything if I couldn't talk? How was I supposed to answer questions or ask questions? I knew a lot of words, but I couldn't read a book. I had a million thoughts in my head, but I couldn't share them with anybody. On top of that, people didn't really expect the kids in age five to learn much anyways. It was driving me crazy. I couldn't have been much more than six when Mrs. V figured out what I needed. One afternoon after school, after a snack of ice cream with caramel sauce, she flipped through the cable channels and stopped at a documentary about some guy named Stephen Hawking. Now I'm interested in almost anything that has a wheelchair in it. Duh! I even like the Jerry Lewis telethon. Turns out Stephen, Stephen Hawking has something called ALS, and he can't walk or talk, and he's probably the smartest man in the world, and everybody knows it. That is so cool. I bet he gets really frustrated sometimes. After the show went off, I got real quiet. He's like you, sort of, isn't he? Mrs. V asked. I pointed to yes on my board, then pointed to no. 
I don't follow you, she scratched her head. I pointed to need on my board, then to read, need, read, need, read. I know you can read lots of words, Melody, Mrs. V said. I pointed again, more. I could feel tears coming, more, more, more. Melody, if you had to choose, which would you rather be able to do, walk or talk? Talk, I pointed to my board. I hit the word again and again, talk, talk, talk. I have so much to say. So Mrs. V made it her new mission to give me language. She ripped all of the words off my communication board and started from scratch. She made the new words smaller so more could fit. Every single space on my talking board got filled with names and pictures of people in my life, questions I might need to ask, and a big variety of nouns and verbs and adjectives. So I could actually compose something that looked like a sentence. I could ask, where is my book bag? Or say, happy birthday, mom, just by pointing with my thumb. I have magic thumbs, by the way. They work perfectly. The rest of my body is sort of like a coat with buttons done up in the wrong holes. But my thumbs came out, of no, came out with no flaws, no glitches, just my thumbs. Go figure. All right, so maybe we can say that she has, and you can put quotes, magic thumbs. Okay, or we can say perfectly functioning thumbs. All right. <clears throat> Every time Mrs. V would add new words, I learned them quickly, used them in sentences, and was hungry for more. I wanted to read. So she made flashcards, pink for nouns, blue for verbs, green for adjectives, piles and piles of words I learned to read, little words like fish and dish and swish. I like rhyming words. They're easy to remember. It's like a buy one, get the rest free sell at the mall. I learned big words like caterpillar and mosquito and words that follow crazy rules like knock and gnome. I learned all the days of the week, months of the year, and all the planets, oceans, and continents. Every single day I learned new words. I sucked them in and gobbled them up like they were Mrs. V's cherry cake. And then she would stretch out the cards on the floor, position me on a big pillow so I could reach them, and I'd push the cards into sentences with my fists. It was like stringing the beads of a necklace together to make something really cool. I liked to make her laugh, so I put the words into wacky order sometimes. The blue fish will run away. He does not want to be dinner. She also taught me words for all the music I heard at home. I learned to tell the difference between Beethoven and Bach, between a sonata and a concerto. She'd pick a selection on a CD, then ask me the composer. Mozart, I'd point to the correct card from the choice that she'd set in front of me. Then I'd point to the color blue on my board. Huh, she asked. When she's played a selection from Bach, I'd point to the correct composer, then once again touch the color blue on my board. I also touched purple. She looked confused. I searched around for the right words to explain what I meant. I wanted her to understand that music was colorful when I heard it. I finally realized that even Mrs. V couldn't figure out everything in my head. We kept going. Sometimes she'd play hip hop music, sometimes oldies music, and the colors it produced flowered around her as easily as her clothing. Mrs. V took me outside in all kinds of weather. One day she actually let me sit outside in the rain. It was steaming hot and I was sticky and irritable. It must have been about 90 degrees outside. We were sitting on her porch watching the storm clouds gather. She told me the names of all the clouds and made up stories about them. I knew that later she'd have the names of every kind of cloud on word cards for me. Big old Nimbus up there. He's black and powerful and can blow all the other clouds out of the sky. He wants to marry Miss Cumulus Cloud but she's too soft and pretty to be bothered with such a scary guy. So he gets mad and makes storms, she told me. Finally, old Nimbus got his way and the rain came down. <laughs> Mika, stop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the rain came down. Okay, finally old Nimbus got his way and the rain came down around me and Mrs. V, it rained so hard. I couldn't see past the porch. The wind blew and the wet coolness of the rain washed over us. It felt so good. A small leak on Mrs. V's porch let a few drops of rain fall on my head. I laughed out loud. Mrs. V gave me a funny look, then hopped up. You want to feel it all, she asked. I nodded my head. Yes, yes, yes. 
She rolled me down the ramp Dad had built, both of us getting wetter every second. She stopped when we got to the grass, and we let the rain drench us. My hair, Mika. <laughs> naughty. <laughs> so naughty. Stop. Stop. Okay. Oh, sorry. All right. She rolled me down the ramp Dad had built both of us, getting wetter every second. She stopped when we got to the grass, and we let the rain drench us. My hair, my clothes, my eyes and arms and hands. Wet, wet, wet. It was awesome. The rain was warm, almost like bath water. I laughed and laughed. Eventually, Mrs. V rolled me back up the ramp and into the house where she dried me off, changed my clothes, and gave me a cup of chocolate milk. She dried off my chair, and by the time Dad came to pick me up, the rain had stopped and everything was dry once more. I dreamed of chocolate clouds all night. All right, that's the end of chapter six. So we wrote down adjectives that described Melody. The conflict basically is still that Melody stuck inside of her head, but we do know now that Mrs. V can kind of understand her a little bit more. And so she's learning words. She still can't talk yet, but she can use her board to help her form adjectives, nouns, verbs, proper nouns, all the things we're focusing on today as well. I don't think there was any rising action pieces in today. Um, so that's it for today's lesson. Sorry, my dog was a pain. Remember, if you didn't get everything in this video, re-watch it. It's only 20 minutes. You can fast forward to when I just start reading. All right, email me with any questions. Bye.